Good morning. morning. Obviously, not Pastor Greg. (laughs) Um, He's enjoying some vacation time, which is uh, well needed. Um, So we want to make sure we keep him in prayers. He should be back in the office, I believe, Wednesday, I think, maybe Thursday. So as we begin worship today, we certainly have two events that have affected all of us. First, this is 9-11, the remembrance of 9-11, the 21st anniversary. We certainly think about all how much has changed because of that event and the lives that have been lost because of that event. And we also want to remember the family of Queen Elizabeth. It truly is an era gone uh, in many ways. Uh, She's been queen my entire life. It's just, to think of that, it's just amazing. But what I want to highlight about her is that when 9-11 happened and we began our memorial services about 9-11, she in England had her royal band play in honor of the United States. Uh, and even then, she was always thinking of other and what was happening to other countries. So um, I just want to highlight those two, two things <clears throat> as we remember today and prayers and everything else. Most of the prayers are in your uh, bulletin, but we do want to remember also Bernice Stevenson, Ruth's sister, who is quite ill and maybe nearing the end of her life. So please stand, and as I, I want to ask you three questions. Who are we, what do we do, and how do we do it? Redeemer Lutheran Church is a community of believers, together making Christ known, sharing in faith, life, and service. We sing our opening hymn, 888. Before we begin our confession, I want to send a very warm welcome to Art Sortland, who is our preacher today. You forget things, you know? Sorry. No, you're standing right there and I forgot you. (laughs) Let us confess before God and for one another. Before God and the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God and Father of all, we confess that we are sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. 
We have told lies and said hurtful things, acted in ways in which we could take back. We looked in a way when action was needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, heal us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything, everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are forgiven and taken away, and you are made new. <clears throat> Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving to one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. We sing the refrain, verse 1, and the refrain. Overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back yourself, all to yourself, all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you, and may follow all things that sustain our life. In your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 through 14. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed it to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people? whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Psalm chapter 51, verses 1 through 10. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, 
and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. The word of the Lord. Will you stand for the reading of the gospel? Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, <clears throat> What a joy it is to be here again. It's been about 10 years. Many of you I remember quite nicely. Actually, everybody I remember quite nicely. <laughs> Honestly, it was a wonderful year I had here as an interim pastor. And it was a joy this morning to meet new members, new attendees of services here. I'm sorry I won't be able to stay afterwards for the sh social hour, but maybe there will be a time I can come and worship with you and do just that. I'd love to meet more new people. And uh, I want to first say, though, that I do uh, follow this congregation on the international and on the intellectual highway called the web. I travel the web all over the world. And it's been really nice to see what Pastor Greg has been doing and your cooperation and following and... You know, pastors need to be led, and when they're led by a congregation like you, I simply say, you lucky dude, you lucky dude, <laughs> and uh, good for you, but you have worked hard. And not only Pastor Greg, but you, because I did look carefully at your website, and I hung around the phrases, I hung around the words more than once. And I picked up a gleam that just kind of went right to me deep inside, that no doubt this church has been doing wonderful things, is doing wonderful things, and continues to do wonderful things. And uh, reminds me just like what Jesus told us to do. Uh, Jesus practiced what he preached. I want to say that right away. I mean, those were some high standards he gave when he preached. But he practiced them. And you practice them. I see that in the website, and I see it here today. When a pastor shows up in the church as a visitation pastor or come to fill in some day, you know, he peruses and gets the feel of the layout and the people. I felt, hey, this is one 
civilized group of people I'm coming to today. <laughs> I'm liking this. So uh, did you pick up that religious leader who uh, began to uh, ac accuse some of the folks who were showing up that day when Jesus was speaking? No. He, what did he call these people? And he said, throwaways, throwaways. I don't see anything even coming close to this church ever wanting to throw away anything, especially people. There's a welcome here. I saw the same thing in the brochure. I picked up your brochures. I'm taking them home with me today. And the same thing is repeated in the website, the International Intellectual Highway. How about the hospitality? You know, when Jesus, wherever he was, you know, we, we pastors have picked up a lot about how to see the layout before we show up. He set the high bar for us. There wasn't one person that he didn't have eye contact with when he gathered the people. Eye contact with everyone. He spoke to them. Right away, they listened. You see, that's an example for not only pastors, but for you as well and for all people. There are no throwaways. He knew a person that was pointed out and needed to be pointed out as a special person to come down front and center. He knew what to do. Outsiders, why were they so interested in coming? So many of the folks came who really would not be considered candidates to come to a religious meeting or to a meeting with some high priest. Why did they continue to come? And that's an example for us today as we think about the ministry that we can do. Invite, invite, invite. Acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. Embrace, embrace, embrace. That's what he did. How easy that is. Because people want to be loved. They want to be respected. They want to be honored. It doesn't make any difference where they stand on things or how they feel about things. Pro-God, pro-God, pro-Jesus, anti-Jesus. Hey, love them. Give everybody a break. How many times have we stood aside and kind of laid down what we should be picking up and working with? Later on, it comes back again and says, wow, I'm going to start over again. We've done that repeatedly. Even regular church attenders, even pastors. Pastors need a break. Jesus needed a break. He took off to the hills. Human. God came to this world and lived the life of a human. The Pharisees say that Jesus was both careless and reckless. You know, we can draw that conclusion about people. Their behavior may be very inconsistent. But, you know, we all have those moments, don't we, when we falter when we're unhappy with ourselves. You know, we're told to give other people a break, but how about we giving ourselves a break? Acknowledge, rest, come back. Be who you were, who you are. That's what God wants. Notice how Jesus describes these matters. The lost is deemed valuable. You're valuable. Human life is valuable. The gold and silver of this world and everything else related to stays like rocks in the ground when we leave. Anyone is deemed valuable to begin a search. I love it when we drive down the freeway and we see the big reader board saying to look out for these, I think they're called silver, you know, people, elderly people like me who get lost is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Look out for this pickup truck. It's red, and this guy is a little lost. Value people, especially children. When somebody's injured somewhere, pull the car over. Let the ambulance come through. When the fire comes, let the firemen do it out. Stand back. We value human life. No one, no one is deemed a throwaway. Isn't it interesting that everybody kind of agrees along this, don't they? Be they believers or not. Categorizing people only creates a distance and an exit. I, I like reading periodically, amongst other things, what Max 
Lucado wrote, and in one of his books, I wrote this down, pigeonholing permits us to wash our hands and leave. How easy it is to pigeonhole somebody. That's a judgment. That's a condemnation. You walk away and say, enough of him. Put yourself in that same position as being pigeonholed, and you know the feeling. Today's gospel has sometimes been called, believe it or not, the lost and found department of the Bible, and rightly so, the lost and found. And how many times do we, when we read that, may simply put it aside, okay, that makes sense, and go on to the next thing. But let's hang around the words like we would when we go on a website and we want to learn something about the church. We've been lost. We've been found. It's almost cyclical, isn't it? We can be lost, but then we're found again. We can be discovered by somebody else who says the right word to us, and we turn our life around. Or we can say, I should have known that all along. Yes, it makes sense. I found myself. Think for a moment about our many searches that we have been on and we never gave up. Can't find my car keys. <laughs> what happened to my other earring? And the search begins. <laughs> and you hold your breath. You walk with fear and trepidation. Was it at the grocery store it fell off? Or my keys on the parking lot? I don't know. An interesting thing happened when I lost in some very important papers a few years ago. I was in a rush, inadvertently laid them somewhere. That's what I did, but I did not think that way. Somebody grabbed them and took away with them. Three days went by. Every hour was consumed as I backtracked, backtracked, and backtracked. Got so tired I went to bed early one night. Three days later. All of a sudden, I woke up, sat up, threw on my pants, my shoes, ran out, and as I was walking towards my vehicle, slowly, in my dream, I saw some paperwork on the head hood of my car. <laughs> and there they were. Now, the interesting thing about it is, I had been doing a lot of praying. He didn't answer when I was up awake and walking around. He answered when I was unconscious in bed. <laughs> Isn't that a miracle of miracles? And in similar ways, when we do things and it just doesn't work out in the kingdom and, oh, this is taking forever, my advice to me was go sleep on it, Sortland, <coughs> and let God do his thing. And lo and behold, I felt the angels singing when I found those papers. <laughs> I learned an important lesson. Let God do what God does best. I tell you, it says in verse 7 of today's gospel, I tell you there will be more joy in heaven. Again in verse 10, I tell you there is joy before the angels. There was a lost lamb. There was a lost coin. If we understand what Jesus was really expressing that day, we will embrace God's heart. Did you pick that up in some of the readings and singing today? And let the inner battle of self-absorbency slip away. Aim for the heart of God. We know what it is. Think about the importance that we were made in his image, the image of whatever God relayed is who we are. God has a heart, you might say, and a lot more. Prior to today's gospel, we read the final words in chapter 14. I think this is a good introduction to the beginning of today's gospel reading from verse 1. In those last verses of chapter 14, it says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Pay attention. I got something good coming up in the next chapter. And it's really good. 
It's found in the lost and found department. The tax collectors, uh, collectors wanted to hear, but they didn't. They just didn't. The Pharisees didn't hear. They didn't get the feel of the love of God in their heart. How about that grumbling that resulted with Jesus in the fellowshipping with known sinners? Much like Moses experienced with the Israelites, isn't it? It will be a good to remember that the table fellowship implies acceptance. I saw good fellowship on your website. Dynamite, good stuff. I saw pictures of fellowshipping around tables, fellowshipping in the kitchen, fellowshipping outside around a fire, fellowshipping wherever you went and did things with people, implying that we embrace you here. You're part of the meal that we, I am sharing in with you. Wherever Jesus went, he made sure he had a meal ready for them. I would say he's king of the fish fries of the Bible. <laughs> couldn't do it better. Anybody couldn't do it better than him whatsoever. The main factor in all of this is not forgiving, but with finding. The Greek word that's used is used seven times in this chapter is eurisko, which implies to find, not to condemn. It's meant to be transformational, to find. Kind of falls back into the lost and found department, doesn't it? Now, all of that seemed to be said that the question to be personally and individually asked is, do we want to be lost or do we want to be found? We can let ourselves be lost. There's so much out there that makes us either dismal, sad, depressed, unhappy, wanting for something better. What is better? I can remember visiting people in prisons in the Navy, in the brig, in the Marine Corps, the brig. One of the most interesting things I heard from some of those prisoners was, I've made the mistake and I'm owning it and I'm never going to own anything like this again. Boy, hard lesson. Doing time is hard. But many can have their lives turned around in that time as they reassess themselves. That's the dream of society. Even when we have to walk the path in life and it's not doing us a bit of good, but we have somebody who's encouraging us, saying, when you're ready to talk, talk to me, I'll listen. If you need some help, I'll help you. How many back off from that kind of generosity, but later on say, it makes sense. I need to buckle up and get it right with myself. Getting found requires admitting that we belong to God. I like that so much better. To belong. I want to belong. I don't want to be an outcast. I don't want to be a throwaway. I want to belong. It's God's job to search and save. He does that. It's our job to search and welcome. Sure, it takes a load off our back, doesn't it? I can't save anybody. You can't save anybody. But we can individually and collectively as a congregation welcome. If you hang around the website to this church, now I like to hang around. Remember the best place to hang around when I was a kid to meet other kids was on the steps of the candy shop a block away from where I lived. After a while, when we didn't have money, somebody says, hey, I'm going to get some candy. Would you like some? Yeah, thank you, my friend. <laughs> Great things happen when you hang around the candy store. <laughs> so, let the saving be done by God. Let our welcoming and embracing be done by us. How fun that is. Ten years ago when I was here, I thought, is this congregation for real? I was excited because there was merriment. 
there was food. <laughs> Everybody in the kitchen was having a merry, merry time. <sighs> Says, Jesus is here somewhere and has been ever since. The starting points with Jesus and with us is God's grace. And we have all received it. We all feel it. And we all want to belong to it. We know it. We know. And grace is to search, not to blame, not to blame. It is to find, not punish, not punish, and to rejoice, not condemn, not to condemn. That's how we free ourselves up. That's how we can go on and do his work in a merry, merry way. And nothing will dissuade us. Mm -hmm. Nothing will scare us. Because every day is a joy. God bless you. God bless Redeemer Lutheran Church. God bless the website to this church. <laughs> and God bless all who come here to worship and all who read about your church on the international intellectual highway. Well done, thou good and faithful servants. Amen.
Please stand as able. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy and grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your word is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we know peace in our world, peace in our home, and peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your children wander homeless and hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in any need. Especially we name the people in Timberline whose cabins are being threatened by the Goats Rocks fire. And please send healing to Ivy Nelson who broke both her radius and ulna when playing soccer yesterday. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. especially other prayers. We pray for the United States of America on this 9-11 anniversary that we can come together and not be divided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Your children wander homeless and the hung, oh, excuse me, I did that one. <laughs> Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Gathered together in sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share God's peace with one another. God's peace. <laughs> you need a
Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we do have a few announcements. Uh, most of them are in the bulletin, so please read that. Um, we do want to highlight a couple things like dinner theater. Do you want to say anything about that, Brad? I can. We're right in the middle of it. In, uh, in, as far as the show goes, the, the cast, wait till you hear them. They're, they're so good with this. I can't wait to have you see this. And yeah, we're, look, we're still looking for some people, but I've got to get them from Wainwright. So I'm not, I haven't been over there yet because we want some of the middle school kids over there to join us. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted. It's the last Friday and Saturday night of Halloween weekend. So it's going to be great. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. I have two things. First, we have our second box on this Thursday. So keep us in your prayers for lots more people to come. We had a big time with 30,000 now. And thank you to all of the people that are volunteering for that. And I would like to do the standing ovation to Bob Sig and Rhonda. They took a whole truckload of garbage. <laughs> yes. So we've tried over the last, I don't know, a year and a half to get choir going and we'll sing maybe once and then COVID numbers spike and we back off again. And it happened this summer again. In fact, I got COVID um, in July. So we kind of, you know, uh, backed off. But I would love to get going again this fall. Um, so not next Sunday, but the following Sunday, I think it's September 25th, we will plan on rehearsing after services, you know, go get coffee, but maybe about 10, 15, we'll plan on coming back and starting rehearsal. I've ordered new music, um, Elaine and Cheryl, it should be coming in the next couple of days, you'll be getting a box. Um, so we'll, we'll get started again. We need altos and we need tenors, so if you are have not been in the choir and um, sing one of those parts, even if you sing bass or 
Soprano, we would love to have you, but especially if you sing tenor or alto, um, we would really love to have you come join us. So thank you. I believe Frank has an announcement. Any, did I miss anything? Is any, any more announcements? Oh, birthdays, thank you. See, that's why, you know, you stand up here, your brain doesn't work. This is true. You stand up here and your brain does not work. It just, or you cry, or you cry. right, whatever, you know. So, uh, oh, Gloria, your birthday is today. Wow, woohoo. And so let us sing to Gloria and Greg Keel, who is tomorrow. <laughs> Birthdays are good. They're good. That means you're still here. It's good. Why, just my last thank you. Um, this is a personal one. Thank you to Brad for helping me sing with the liturgy for communion. Uh, you know, God made me a pastor, didn't give me a singing voice. What's up with that? But I really, I just want to shout out a huge thank you for that. So let us take our offering uh, and uh, continue our service. Those of you who are on Facebook, we are beginning to do the communion. This would be a good time to get your uh, bread and wine together. and grace, receive, receive the gifts we offer, and grant our whole life may give you glory and praise. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ and the Spirit with whom you and your people poured out upon the church. And so with the church on earth, all creation, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy and gracious and merciful God everything is filled with your glory we give you thanks for your promise and presence which has sustained the faithful in this and every generation above all we give you thanks for Jesus born of Mary in whom word indeed announced your gentle rule of justice reconciliation and peace On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all the promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. May we be so bold as to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please come as you are able.
body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Please stand and receive this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen.
yet live us by the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward in our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive this blessing. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, verses 1, 2, and 4. Jesus Christ.